Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. You are welcome to today's lecture. Uh, today we'll be talking about enzyme kinetics. Um, when we say enzyme kinetics, it simply means the quantitative uh, measurements of the activity of an enzyme. So let's look at some definition of some terms that will help us to understand the kinetics very well. Uh, enzyme activity, this can be defined as the amount of enzyme that's required to convert one micromole of substrate to product by unit time under specified assay conditions. So when we talk about the quantity of the enzyme that is now required to convert each micromole of the substrate, that is say the reactant, to product per minute under specified assay condition. And these are the assay conditions can be the optimum pH, optimum temperature of the enzyme, and, and specified uh, specific uh, um, uh, ionic strengths and, and so on. So, and also there is what we call uh, units of an enzyme. When we say one international unit, which is capital U, one unit is equals to one micromole per minute. This is the international unit uh, of enzyme activity. Uh, the SI unit of enzyme activity is the is the catal or ketal is defined as the amount of enzyme that is required to convert one mole of substrate to product per second. So you can see one unit is equivalent to 1.67 times terrestrial to the power minus eight catal or ketal, which is equivalent to 16.7 nanoketal. So specific activity is defined as the number of the enzyme units per milligram of the protein. And the unit is micromole per minute per milligram of the protein. Micromole per minute per milligram of the protein. Remember, um, activity of the enzyme is what? The amount of enzyme required to convert one micromole of substrate to product per minute. So the unit will be what? Micromole per minute, right? So when you divide the enzyme activity, by the milligram of the protein is now specific activity. Now we have turnover number, which is equal to the unit of the activity per mole of the enzyme. It's also called the catalytic enzyme. It allows for direct comparison of the catalytic ability between the enzymes. Example, the constants for catalase and amylase, alpha amylase, are five times 10 raised to the power six and 1.9 times 10 raised to the power four. Uh, respectively. So that is the, the turnover is for amylase and for catalase. Uh, uh, for catalase is 5, point, uh, 5 times 6 times 10 raised power minus 6 times 10 raised power 6, I mean, and 1.9 times 10 raised power 4, respectively. So this indicates that the catalase is about uh, 2,500 times more active than the alpha amylase. And we have what we call the maximum velocity which is the velocity obtained under conditions of substrate saturation of the enzyme and specified conditions of pH, temperature, and ionic strength. So when we look at Michaelis mental rate equation, um, you, we cannot talk about uh, enzyme activity without, uh, or rather enzyme kinetics without talking about Michaelis menthin. Um, uh, in 1903, there is a French scientist, a French chemist that is called Henry, who found that enzyme kinetics was initiated by a bond between enzyme and the substrate. So in the substrate and the enzyme that is the reactant form a bond, uh, we can uh, measure the activity or the kinetics of the enzyme by uh, actually measuring the rate of the conversion of the uh, substrate to, to, to product. So uh, his work was taken up by Leonor Michaelis and Maud Mentin. They proposed a mathematical model of the reaction. It involves an enzyme 
represented as capital E binding to a substrate or the reactant S to form a complex, which is enzyme substrate complex, which in turn is converted to a product P as represented below. So you have the enzyme plus the substrate, which will reversibly give you enzyme substrate complex and which in turn will give you product and the enzymes. So the enzymes, you remember one of the properties of the enzyme at the end of the reaction, they are not, they are unchanged, right? They are not uh, changed at the end of the reaction. So at the steady state, uh, the rate of formation of the enzyme substrate complex is the same as, is, and as the rate of the breakdown of that enzyme substrate complex. So we can, uh, we can represent uh, V formation as the rate of formation of the enzyme substrate complex as K1 uh, substrate concentration multiplied by enzyme concentration. So this K1 is what rate constant. So and the rate of breakdown of the separate enzyme substrate complex is going to be K2 multiplied by enzyme substrate complex plus uh, K3 plus enzyme and uh, multiplied by enzyme substrate complex. So we can now have these two equations as K1 multiplied by enzyme substrate complex is equal to K, uh, K uh, enzyme substrate complex um, multiplied by K2 plus K3 over K1 which is can now call this as equation two. So we can define the ratio of the red constant as Km, 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 okay, not Km, I is Km, all right, <coughs> is Km, I can call it Km, let me briefly correct it, is Km, okay. All right, all right, it's Km, that is to say, um, Km is now equals to K2 plus K3 all over K1. And this Km is the what Michaelis maintain constant or Michaelis constant. So we have this enzyme substrate complex, okay? Uh, enzyme substrate complex, multiplied by Km to give us substrate uh, concentration multiplied by the enzyme as our equation three. So now E enzyme concentration is the concentration of free enzyme and is given by the difference between the total enzyme added to the system and any enzyme in the enzyme substrate complex. That is to say the enzyme concentration free enzyme is now equals to total enzyme minus enzyme substrate, con uh, substrate concentration, which will now give you enzyme substrate complex multiplied by the Km. When you divide now through now, we are trying to uh, drive the uh, uh, michaelis menten equation. When you divide through by the enzyme substrate complex, it gives you enzyme concentration, a total enzyme concentration minus enzyme substrate, con uh, substrate concentration will now give you enzyme Substrate enzyme concentration multiplied by Km all over what uh, substrate concentration. So you remember you are dividing this equation, you are dividing it what through by what uh, substrate concentration. So when you also divide through by enzyme substrate concentration, it gives you this. When you divide uh, this left hand side by the enzyme substrate concentration, you will get uh, enzyme substrate, you uh, get total enzyme, free enzyme divided by enzyme substrate concentration minus one, because this, if you sub, uh, separate these two and you give them their denominator separately, enzyme substrate concentration will cancel enzyme substrate concentration to give you one, so that you have ET over ES here, okay? And here you have what you have already divided here by ES, so ES now cancel ES so that you have KM over S, okay, Km over S. So you, when you redistribute it, this is what you are going to get at the end of the day. So that Km over substrate concentration plus one is equal to Km plus substrate concentration over substrate concentration. Um, this will give you what equation four. So when the enzyme is saturated with substrate, 
we can say all of it will be in the enzyme substrate complex so that ET will now be equal to what ES. Then the velocity observed will be highest possible, which is called now Vmax, which is equal to K3 multiplied by uh, ET, okay, total enzyme uh, concentration. So ET is now equal to Vmax over K3. So when ET is not equal to ES, we can say V equals to K3 multiplied by ES so that e ES concentration is now equal to V over K3 uh, multiplied by total enzyme concentration over ES, so which is now equal to V mass over K3 uh, over V over K3, which is now equal to V mass over V. Now at the end of the day, you will drive the Michaelis maintain equation as V max is over V is equal to Km uh, plus substrate concentration over substrate concentration O, the most popularly known uh, as what V is equal to V max multiplied by substrate concentration all over Km plus substrate concentration. So now this is now uh, your Michaelis maintain equation. So when you consider the Michaelis maintain equation under three different conditions, it is going to change. So when the substrate on the KM is much more or most much larger than the substrate concentration, the equation becomes this: V is now equals to V max substrate concentration over KM, which is now equals to V substrate um, uh, V max over KM multiplied by substrate concentration. This implies that at low substrate concentration. The rate is directly proportional to uh, substrate concentration. This is the first assumption. And when the Km is now equal to uh, substrate concentration, so we have Vmax, V is equal to Vmax multiplied by substrate concentration over two times substrate concentration, or V is equal to now Vmax, or a half Vmax. Okay, that is to say, Km is the substrate concentration at which we have half the maximum velocity. So when Km, the third condition, condition when Km is much, much lesser than uh, substrate concentration, we can say V is now equals to V max. That is to say at high speed, V is equals to, uh, at high substrate concentration, V is now equals to V max. So when this uh, maintain equation that we are seeing can be transformed in linearly into three different equations, we can, we can it can be, transform into what we call the uh, Landweaver-Bock uh, plot or Landweaver-Bock equation, linear equation, which is transformation of Michaelis maintain equation. And when you can see that when you take the reciprocal of both left and right hand side of the Michaelis maintain equation, you have one over V so called CKM over Vmax uh, multiplied by one over substrate concentration plus one over Vmax. So when you plot one over V, as vices one over s, that's one over v uh, as x axis and one over s as what the one over v as y axis, one over s as x axis. So we can see we have uh, our equation of straight line y is now equals to m x plus c. So our intercept will be one over v max, our x axis would be one over s, you can see. And our slope, which is the M, will now be Km over Vmax. You can see it. And one over Vmax is our substrate uh, intercept. And you have one over V as our what y axis. And our y intercept will be what minus minus one over Km. So this linear form is called the Langweaver Bob equation and the plot. Uh, the line we were about plot is called the line we were about plot. This is the plot. So it can be used to obtain values of the kinetics parameter for a given enzyme reaction. Km is an indication of the affinity of the enzyme for its substrate. So Km is the measure of the affinity of the enzyme towards its substrate. So it means low Km indicates high affinity. So we take note of this. If you have enzyme that has low Km, it means it has high affinity towards that substrate. And high Km means low affinity towards that substrate. So there are other linear forms, we call, we call them Edi-Hofstede equation, which is given as V is equals to minus Km multiplied by V over substrate concentration plus Vmax. So this is our Y is now equals to K, Y is now equals to Mx plus C. This is our V is our Y. Uh, this is Edi-Hofstede, V is our Y axis uh, minus Km. Uh, is our slope, look at it, 
and v over s is our x axis and v max is our what uh, intercept so also it harness wolf equation is given by substrate concentration of our velocity is equals to one over v max multiplied by substrate concentration plus km over v max so if we say represented by straight line y is equals to mx plus c this is our y axis you can see it this is our slope okay one over v max is our slope and we have our x axis here as our substrate concentration and our intercept km over v max our intercept on the positive y axis and we have the, our negative intercept at y at x axis here minus km so thank you very much this brings us briefly to the end of um today's lectures please feel free to ask questions in the forum if you understand it if you don't understand anything post it here and we shall discuss it here and also in the in the forum thank you very much see you next